What goes into creating high-performing schools, which we all really love to do and want to do, but I love looking at what's the mindset as we approach these challenges, and we've heard about that from Anthony this morning talking about the VUCA, but high achievers and those that build high achieving groups look at these as challenges. This is fun. Throw more at me so that I can really bring everyone together to get these results. This is really what we want. We want to create harmony. We want to create vision. We want to create passion, bring out the best in everyone and bring everyone into that fold to bring about learning for our kids to reach that optimal level. So our role as a high-performing leader is to have these multiple and varied roles that we take on, whether it's bringing groups together, orchestrating all of this organization development, leading, helping, listening, teaching, or guiding from a piloting piece to bring all these views together, to bring people together, to shine light, and to create where we're going with these results. It's bringing people together, as we've heard about through all of our presentations. But What's the commonality? What's that focus goal, that purpose? And how do we find out that that is the prioritized piece? So as we create these goals and the mission and the culture, is it specific, strategic, and intentional? As we look at school leader paradigm, it talks about the lens that we have as great high-performing leaders. It's a macro and a micro. So we're looking at this vision, but at the same time, what are the tasks, the strategies that will get us to that and that information builds upon all the pieces that exist within that school leadership realm. So what's the history? What's the characteristics? Trending up, trending down. What's an opportunity? What's the hindrance? Knowing all of those variables and understanding then helps us build this organization. So a kind of a hands-on summary of the school leader paradigm is the development of the organization, which is the culture, the structures, and the people. We've heard a lot about these, how they interact. Let's take a look. Culture, we've heard a lot about. So the culture is that driving force of the values and beliefs. We can't change the values, but we can change beliefs and build commonalities. But in order to change the culture and establish that, we need structures. So the structures are equally important to be able to provide time for people to talk, to think, to reflect, to be able to provide policies and plans, curriculum that guide the thinking around where we want to take this vision, and it's the people who bring that culture and the structures together. So how do we motivate these different varied people to bring out the best in each one, but all the groups have to come together, and what do we do to develop those people so that we can reach those results at a faster rate? We look at a lot of the research turnaround schools in the past. Well, you don't want to make changes in the beginning. Turnaround said, school said, no, do it right away. The reality is we want this today. High performers don't want to wait for tomorrow. So we build a lattice of leadership, not scaffolding, not levels of leadership, but the intertwined, interworking scaffolding. And in that lattice, we also bring in the leadership of kids and parents and community members. As we build the leadership of staff, we really want to give them the skills to, to be able to work with teams, to be able to communicate effectively, to really build that leadership, and not just hand them a leadership role, but build it. The other piece that sometimes we don't address, the parents. So many of you have parent universities. It's not just teaching them about the curriculum, but how do they parent better? How can they interact in the school and feel comfortable coming in our schools and be parent volunteers, tutors? And then the key piece are the students. Do we teach leadership, not just academics, but leadership to our kids? Bring in leaders, sports, academic, all kinds of community people to teach the leadership skills to our kids. The pieces we do a lot of and we continue to do as effective high-performing leaders is modeling. Do we model for kids, for staff, for parents? Our readings, our programs, being here today, we model that for everyone to see our behavior and our thoughts and the coaching. We, we all know coaching is instrumental, but do we have coaches? Who is it that we can turn to for that coaching? And do we teach coaching skills to our staff, to the parents, so parents can coach their kids, to the kids so they can coach? And lastly, the partnership piece is so crucial, bringing universities, outside people, as well as the community and the staff and the parents to build that. So a great quote that brings in the four qualities for us is the highest levels of performance come to people 
who are centered, intuitive, creative, and reflective. And they see not hindrances, but they see opportunities for change. Thank you. Thank you.